Let's go right to the scene of that hostage standoff, a major operation unfolding right now. The gunman holed up in a small printing business holding at least one hostage. Police are communicating with them, and it's all happening in a small village about 20 miles outside Paris, very near the major international airport. Vans filled with police are heading into that town right now, cutting off access to it. A message on City Hall's website warning people to stay inside. One of those schools on lockdown just 500 yards from the center of where all this is being uh, happening. And then another school, the elementary students are being evacuated right now. Yeah, the right teachers now. have been singing nursery rhymes with right. the students to keep, to keep them calm. calm. Being evacuated right now. We have full team coverage of this breaking story. ABC's Terry Moran starts us off in Paris. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. This is it. This is happening now. And this showdown began overnight here in Paris. The noose on these suspects closing in gradually. This massive police manhunt focusing on this area north of Paris. And at about 3.45 this morning, Paris time, there was a roadblock set up in that area. The suspects came upon it. They exchanged gunfire. And they retreated into this industrial area where they are now cornered. Police believe they are very dangerous, of course, and they are ready to die. I fight him. Helicopters in the sky above an industrial area in a town 20 miles north of Paris. Police and SWAT teams moving into position. The suspects, brothers Sharif and Saeed Kouachi, cornered. An extremely dangerous situation. The town in lockdown. Residents ordered to shelter in place. The town website's message, if you live in the town, stay in your home. Children in schools are in lockdown. And in a high school not far from the standoff, students and teachers are trapped, hunkered down. We spoke with teacher Marianne Genet. In the school, there are about uh, 900 persons. And uh, they, they say to us to, to stay uh, in the high school and to be calm, but we can't because we are really scared. Eyewitnesses in the town, Damartin Angual, said the brothers calmly took over the printing company, reportedly telling people to leave, saying, we don't kill civilians. At Charles de Gaulle Airport, just a few miles away, two runways shut down, others allowing only takeoffs. After earlier reports, the Kowachi brothers may be armed with a rocket propelled grenade. Government officials say the standoff began when the brothers came upon a nearby police roadblock, exchanged fire, and then retreated into the printing company. French President Hollande arriving at a crisis meeting reveals his government has stopped several attempted terrorist attacks in recent weeks. But right now, the only question, how will this one end? So, the situation now, the focus on that standoff north of Paris. But this is a rapidly expanding investigation. Police have arrested several other people, held them for questioning. And right now, they are investigating whether a deadly police shooting here in Paris on the south side may be linked to the same group uh, of radical Islamic young men here in Paris. This is a city and a country right now in the grip of terror. Robin? It certainly is. All right, Terry. We're going to go right now to the town under siege, just under an hour outside Paris. Police now blocking the roads to Charles de Gaulle Airport to keep them from escaping in that direction. ABC's Mar Alex Marquat is there on the scene for us. Alex? Good morning, Robin. A very dramatic scene playing out in this small French town. Police have blocked all roads in and out, the highways, uh, the small side roads, dropping a net on this town. There is no one in the streets uh, except police uh, and journalists. Uh, the, the, the town, as you heard, telling residents to stay inside. Most of these schools on lockdown, the students in these classrooms, we spoke with one teacher who told us that the students are staying away from the windows, sitting on the floors, watching TV and singing songs to stay calm. We are right next to a school here. The shutters are closed. We, when we went past, we heard the students chanting, Charlie, 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 a reference to the attack on those offices of Charlie Hebdo. But we've also just gotten word that at least one school, the Ecole Première, which has students aged 8 to 12, 350 students have been evacuated. So these, move, these uh, events are moving very quickly, a very tense situation as these police try to, in the words of the interior minister, neutralize those suspects. And Alex, can you tell us more on how the suspects ended up in this area? Well, the suspects had been sighted about 25 miles farther away from Paris from here yesterday in a, in a wooded rural area. So that's where the SWAT teams descended, going village to village, house to house, looking for these men. 
Early this morning, they hijacked a car and started driving towards Paris, running into that police checkpoint that Terry referenced. And that, that is at that point that their plan went off the rails and they turned into this town, into that industrial zone where that small printing company is going in there and taking, as far as we know, at least one hostage. And again, and again, Alex, roads to the airport have been blocked at this time. As far as we understand, we haven't seen uh, that all roads to, to that airport have been blocked. Charles de Gaulle is the main airport in Paris. What we do know is that all of the roads around this town, this small French town where this uh, hostage situation is playing out, have been blocked. A very tight security net controlled uh, by the gendarmerie and by assault police, restricting the flow of people in and out. But I have to tell you, as I said, there's no one in the streets except for police and journalists. A, a very much a town under siege, Robin. All right. Very much a fluid situation. As well. All right, Alex, thank you. Okay, Robin, thanks. We want to go now to our ABC News contributor, Brad Garrett. And Brad, you spent years as a hostage negotiator for the FBI. Very simple question. How do you negotiate with people who say they want to die? Because the key, George, is intelligence, not to talk them out, because these two brothers are not going to come out and put their hands up. So you keep them talking, you talk about family, you talk about their life, you talk about jihad. Whatever they want to talk about, you engage them. During that time period, you've talked to the printing shop persons. What's the layout of this place? Who's inside it? Have they now placed mics and cameras through micro slots into the, inside this location so they actually can see what's going on? So the whole key is maximize intel. And my sense is going to be this will end up in a tactical assault, but you don't want to do that until you know the maximum amount of information. So what is it that could trigger that kind of an assault? We remember that situation in Sydney just about a month ago when they believed that some of the hostages were in danger. Well, that's going to be the key. Obviously, if they go after the hostage or there's any belief that they're picking up through intelligence that the hostage is in danger, they're going to go in. Now, they've made comments, George, that they don't want to hurt hostages, and I think that's probably right, as they use the word civilians. So that is, that's going to buy them more time as far as the negotiators talking with the two brothers. So all I'm suggesting, George, is this is going to have to end in some tactical format uh, because I just don't see another way out of yeah, this. Yeah, these individuals have shown, as you, as you suggest, somewhat contradictory Im impulses. We, we've heard some reports from inside the magazine just a couple of days ago. They separated out the women from the cartoonists, from the men around the editorial table. That report this morning that you just referenced, that they allowed that gentleman who was a client of the printing business uh, to walk away, saying we don't kill mm -hmm. civilians, yet they are holding that hostage. Correct. But that just may be a bit of a bargaining chip someone that they can use to sort of stand off or buy some time because they, they know in reality there's no place to go. They are at the end of their rope and they're going to talk it through and perhaps do the whole martyr thing, talk about why they're doing what they're doing. You know, it's a higher calling, it's a higher order because that's what they believe, I'm sure, in their minds. So let them talk about that and get them to a comfort level the more you know, and another key point, George, what type of weapons do they have in there? Do they have a rocket-propelled launcher? It's a big deal if they have it. If not, if they've got two AK-47s, then tactically you may be able to go in there and neutralize it before anyone else gets hurt. Is there anyone else the French can put on the phone that might make a difference? Yeah, but you have to be careful with what they call third-party negotiators because that actually can trigger action depending on the relationship. So. Might they do that at some point? Yes. My sense would be they're only going to do that if this becomes prolonged. Okay, Brad Garrett, thanks very much.